Nobody else has that. I call these ones headless horsemen. Just going to say hi. Imported from Australia. Got the little shrimp on it. Okay, 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 okay. So like we, we're right near the Wikiwachi River and we have the Buccaneer Bay and Mermaid Park. It's got a bunch of water slides and stuff like that. And uh, I was a kid in the Lazy Lagoon with the net in the bucket and catching as many guppies and going through the guppy grass and you'd find these little gems of ghost shrimp throughout the, the weeds. and. I'd be so happy when I'd find one carrying eggs. And uh, with the fish, it was like, you constantly had to replace the water and make sure the water didn't get too warm and stuff like that. But the, the shrimp, it seemed like you could keep the entire colony in a bucket all day. And at the end of the day, you could figure out how many you caught without putting the, the shrimp in danger or anything like that. And even doing like the junior life guide program and stuff like that, that was the only one that volunteered all the time to go out and clean the filters. I pump the water up to the water slides and stuff just because I knew I'd bring the net with me, catch some shrimp. Between that and then uh, my summers I'd spend in Hawaii and you go out on night in the, the docks and all of the coral banded shrimp would come out and we'd, we'd catch those and bring them down to the local pet stores and then use that money to buy pizza down at the docks. So it, it, I've always been doing something with crustaceans. Fresh newborn babies, the first week is the most crucial part of its life it needs to get through that first molt. If it can't get through that first molt, it's like a, uh, a jacket that it's wearing. And if it, it can't change the jacket for a new bigger size, it's gonna get stuck in that jacket, it won't be able to grow, and it's gonna die inside that first molt. So you gotta get it through that first molt. If you're having baby survival rate, chances are it's gonna be the worst in that first week. And then after that, you should get gradually better. From the first day it's born, anywhere between two to four months, you can have that shrimp get pregnant and reproduce. Uh, for a male, around two months is about the average time. It could happen a little bit sooner. She can get buried as soon as she displays a saddle. The saddle is that little tiny, basically looks like a saddle that you would ride on a horse right behind the head of the shrimp. It's like a orange, yellow, it's a green color on, depending on the type of shrimp. And then when the male fertilizes those eggs, the eggs will drop into the belly. That's when we call the shrimp buried. It looks like a bunch of berries underneath that it's carrying around. And then it's gonna use its swimmerettes to like fluff the muffins constantly that we call it, uh, to keep oxygen around all of those eggs to keep them nice and going. And that will keep the fungus uh, prevented from getting to the eggs and stuff like that. So then those eggs will take anywhere between 30 days um, to about four, uh, five or six weeks to hatch. The more hotter it is, the faster they'll breed, the quicker they'll grow, but the shortens their lifespan. So in like 80 degree temperatures, you can only expect the shrimp to live for about uh, two to three years. However, if you keep them in the low 70s, 72 I think is prime temperature. That's what we keep our house AC at all year round. Uh, and this is gonna give your shrimp about an extra year in life, so three to four years. It used to be really chaotic in the house. I used to have, this tank was at 170, this tank was 120, this tank was at 150, and it kind of- TDS or TDS, yeah, total dissolved solids. And this was kind of slowing me down. I had to mix water for different, it, it just took up more time, it wasn't as efficient. So now everything in the house besides like maybe one neotank per rack here and there, 
all get the exact same water. So everything's at 150 TDS, 5 GH, 0 KH for all the tanks inside. And then what I do with my racks is like when I go to do water changes, I'll just start here with my best tank and then I'll do this winding snake where I come down and then start at the top of the tanks. The top of the tanks were the last tanks that I added to the rack. I know the rest of the rack is doing great. And then, so the last tank that I do on this rack is my little uh, tank where I have some of the Neos that I brought outside. This is my competition tank. These are the Black Tiger Orange Eyes. I've won more awards with these than anybody else has in the States with their own colony. So like I will start this tank first and then move on to tanks where I rate them. That's like, your baby, yeah, okay. These are gonna be one of the beginning tanks. I got my back line and then we've even got some purples and, and galaxy pintos in here and stuff like that. So we'll take care of those and then we'll move on to like my projects where I got the green tigers going. I've been breeding those for so long without any issues. I know if I touch this tank, with a net or a tool, I could go to any other tank in the house and I wouldn't be transferring any disease or something like that. However, with the Neos, I brought those outside. They took some stress changing and adapting parameters. So it's just kind of the last tank that I, I threw in here. And also like that rabbit snail I want at the auction. I, I'm not gonna put him into uh, one of my main breeding tanks or anything like that. So I threw him in here to kind of quarantine him. But him just him being in here makes him the last stop on the water chain. So if you've seen our entertainment center video, that's all of these tanks on this wall right here. Um, I just, these are like the first racks that I ever built myself. Um, and they're for 55s, they take up a lot of room and you can only do one type of shrimp in each one of these 55s. So instead of the 55s in this spot, I could put 12 10 gallon tanks here. I can put 12 10 gallon tanks there. And that gives me 24 different breeding tanks that I can work with and, and start crossbreeding, selective breeding to get different grades and stuff like that. I'm breeding for quality over quantity inside, especially. Uh, outside, we're definitely going for the numbers. I try to cull as much as I can, but like in a 500 gallon tub with the green jades, it, it wasn't possible. So I moved the green jades inside to work on the quality over quantity with them. I'm very picky on who I let breed on almost all the 10 gallon tanks. You'll be lucky if you find more than two males. Best two males, and then I'll keep like my best 10 females. I'm very stingy on who I let breed, and chances are if I've got one tank already set up like that, I've got a backup cull tank where I'll keep the other females and about the same ratio, where the males will probably be the best looking shrimp in that tank. It's just because you only need two good males, two studs, I used to just do one and then I lost my yellow male and that was a disaster. We recommend one to two shrimp per gallon when you start off the tanks, but it seems like the bigger the tank is, the more you even need. We started the outside tubs, which uh, they're 275 gallon IBC totes. We'd only fill them up about halfway to the 160 gallon mark, but we only started those out with like 20 to 40 shrimp. So they, they can breed, they can populate. It's just how fast and how quickly you want them to succeed. I would just strongly recommend five to 10 gallons if you can. Like the only one where I've really had really good successful breeding in on a smaller tank is the five gallon with the hang on the back filter and doing 50% water changes every two weeks on it. Um, you're gonna have to do more work on the smaller tanks where the 10 gallon tanks, I can easily let go for a whole month or two on vacation, come home, do a 50% water change and step back into it where that nano tank is gonna, it's probably gonna crash over a month or two. The red tiger tank or the fancy red tiger tank for me. On is this, one of your favorites? On this rack, these guys are, yeah. The, the blacks are in the next tank over, but they're not nearly as high grade. I, I had an issue um, beginning of last year where I had uh, dosed my dogs with some flea meds and the hair ended up getting into these tanks and I almost lost the, all my safari uh, grade because of the, the Cause, I mean, cause flea, flea meds. Yeah, flea medication. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if it's going to kill a flea, it probably would kill a shrimp, right? Yeah, so wow. I, it was a long day. I'd gone to the state fair. We had set up my tanks. I dropped Shelby off at the airport, put the flea meds on the dogs. I went outside and did my whole clean out on the pool. I took a shower, 
I just go to sit down for the very first time that day, turn on the Xbox, go to play some Call of Duty, and I see this tank up here. And, and this was one of my most populated tanks. Yeah. And the shrimp are just going zinging and, and floating up to the top and then gliding on their backs, floating down. This tank was going haywire. This tank was going haywire. All of these tanks are going haywire. None of these, luckily. So basically anything where you see the aqua char, the, the shrimp weren't doing good. And the only tank where I actually had death were this tank right here. Uh, and it was only like maybe 25% of the colony was lost. Tell you what, man, I, I didn't know how bad it was. I didn't know if it was just these tanks at first. I'm going down there. You can see the aqua char in those tanks as well. And I basically made it into the hallway before I stopped. It was one of those things where every tank, my stomach was just sinking and like somebody was punching me like Brock Lesnar, just right to the gut every single time. I didn't know what to do. I messaged like all my shrimp buddies. My buddy Chaz from Elevate Shrimp was like, dude, you have any carbon? Throw the carbon in. And I didn't have carbon, but what I had was aqua char. I had a whole bin full of aqua char and I threw a cup into each tank and almost immediately, the shrimp that were on their backs stood up, started that's stop crazy. zinging around. But you put that in there on purpose after you had this issue, and that's what helped the issue. And I never took it out. Okay. I left it in there. The pH hasn't gone haywire. Carbon uh, that is sold, it's an activated carbon, and they run a bunch of chemicals and stuff like that to, to produce it, where the aqua char, it's thrown into a jet engine and fired past its burning point. So it's very porous. It has all of those little tiny crevices that bacterial can colonize. So it could be a, a media, but it's also, it works just as carbon where it removes impurities from the water. If I had hang on the back filters, each one of them would have gotten a bag. Yeah. But I, don't, I didn't have that and I just needed it to work fast. These tanks have been running for over four years and the substrate could just start depleting any time now. So rather than waiting for the substrate to deplete, I'm just gonna start from scratch and know I have another four years before I have to touch those tanks again. You wanna check out the, where these guys are gonna go in Layla's room? Let's do it. All right. So these two tanks are our simple uh, Neo Caridina and Caridina sh shrimp setup that we did for the video. It's really, this is like our workbench table. Uh, we got home from the fair and didn't know where to put her tank, so we kind of just set it here. I used to have some dry scape there, but um, we used to just have boxes of cereal and a couple bottles on top of the fridge. And I was like, Shelby, we should put some tanks on the fridge, and put some use to it. She's like, no, that it's not strong enough. It won't hold. I was like, I'll put this little bit of plywood on top. It'll help structure it. I'll paint it so it doesn't have any issues in case I flood because it's happened. And then uh, we fit four tanks up on there. Our breeding tanks, we got tank tie, and then our main tank of raccoon tigers. The other tank was green tigers, but it was, it was too much for me to cull on top of the refrigerator. The kids are always hungry, so I, I just try to free that up. So I'm probably gonna put some tangerine tigers or something up there that doesn't need to ever be cold or touched. The kids will help me a little bit here and there with water changes, but they're, they're more of like the, uh, the troopers at the uh, fish clubs. They'll run all the bags and help out there. So they're, they're definitely a big part of the hobby and they, they do their own aquascapes and stuff like that. Jaden's won like three first place in the aquascapes and then Layla just won her first one at the Florida State Fair. And then Shelby, uh, I mean, I've never had to be like, I need somebody else to help me move this tank or do that. Shelby's always there to help. When it comes to plants and stuff like that, getting orders, uh, she's got her tanks that she goes and catches. I've got mine. Uh, she likes all the tangerine tigers and all the neos and stuff like that. I'll run to the store and come back and she'll have all of my orders already filled out and ready to go. Uh, I'm dyslexic, so I let her handle all the shipping and stuff like that. So every Monday she's got off. She doesn't though, cause she works with me. So we'll wake up in the morning. We'll get all of our orders written down, all of our labels printed. She basically does all that. All I do is like check to make sure the customer didn't put like a special note in our messages or stuff like that and double check the orders after she's written them all down. And then together we catch all the shrimp. We bag them all up, box them, and ship them out. 
Uh, she used to work at Subway where they roll up the sandwiches. So we do that basically same technique with our bags of shrimp with newspaper. Um, so she, she can do that probably faster than anybody. So we were at the, the first swap meet when everything reopened because of COVID and Mike LaBella goes up to Layla or goes up to Jaden, asks Jaden how many tanks he's got in his room and Jaden's like 40 something. And he goes to Layla and he asks, hey, how many tanks you got in your room? And she got so sad and was like, none and put her head down. And I'm like, Layla, do you want some tanks in your room? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, how many do you want? What do you want? And she's like, I want to, I want a rack like Jaden's. So this is the exact rack that's in Jaden's room. Well, one of them, he's got three racks. There's not enough room in here for three racks. Well, there is, but uh, <laughs> I'm leaving her some play space for her dolls and stuff like that. So where Jaden, he kind of moved into that room with the tanks already set up. She's already in this room. So um, she's got her one fish tank down below. Uh, she's got some Daisy Rice fit. Okay. Daisy Rice oh, fish. Oh, I saw that video. Okay, yeah, I saw that video the other day. Yeah, she wants one one fish tank, but the rest are all going to be shrimp. Okay. So we've got uh, moss in all the tanks. We threw in some Malaysian trumpet snails. The tanks have been running for over 40 weeks. We only run them for about 30 days. Uh, this cycles the tanks, but also builds up a nice little layer of biofilm for the shrimp to graze okay. on. Biofilm should be the number one food source for your shrimp. If you don't have enough biofilm, uh, chances are they're not getting the right uh, nutrition. So snails are all good. All my tanks will have snails. The uh, only snail really that I don't want in these tanks are gonna be rabbit snails just because the acidic water can deteriorate their shell. Other than that, I don't see any harm in snails. Everybody's like, oh, they eat the plants. I think only like neurites or uh, not neurites, um, like apple, apple snails, snails yeah. will, will eat the plants. Um, other than that, your, your pond snails, ram's horns and stuff like that, they're not eating live or healthy plants. They're eating the dead, decaying, melting plants that aren't doing good in your tank in the first place. So if your snails are eating plants, you need to fix the, uh, the problem that's causing it from the root and then not blame the snails. If you're doing water changes and you're feeding your shrimp, there's enough calcium to go around for everybody. Um, the, the proper shrimp food and stuff like that, it, it's, the minerals are gonna be replenished every time you do your water change. So as long as you're doing the average 10% every week or 20% every other week, those minerals will be replenished just fine. Before we add any plants or anything like that, we dip everything and uh, no planaria. We let them soak for about uh, two, uh, two hours at least, but I'll do them overnight even, the plants are still fine. And uh, this will prevent any planaria, hydra, or anything like that. Scuds are another thing that will eat the dead decaying plants. They don't really eat the live growth, but okay. yeah. But then the, the scud itself, when they're, they're pregnant and they release all their babies, they're deprived of nutrition, they're craving protein, so they can eat up baby shrimp like nothing. Because of that reason, really, I don't buy, like the plants I got off Darren, I think are the first new plants I've bought in, in over a year. Um, I'll, I'll get tissue culture plants and stuff like that because there's zero risk of bringing in anything that you don't want other than the plants. They don't do the best at converting into um, submerged tanks, but I, I'll dry start them first and then as they grow, I'll, I'll clip, use the clippings to plant into the tanks and go from there. I haven't imported anything for like four years and I never imported myself. I would buy from other importers here in the States. And yeah, they're, they're a little bit cheaper usually. Um, the only reason why I was really buying imports at all was because it was shrimp nobody else had. The last imported shrimp I bought uh, were cheetahs. Um, and the guy that I bought them from said they're homebred, but he got them way too quickly for them to be bred and they were pretty large. So that's a good indicator on whether or not you get homebred or imported or anything like that. But besides that, uh, it was Stardust and nobody in the States even was breeding them. I got them in one of the first um, orders that came into the United States and I was one of the first ones breeding the Stardust in the States that I know of. If uh, you're a little discouraged that your shrimp aren't breeding or something or you can't find that shrimp and it had a saddle or something like that, the best shrimp at, at hide and go seek are going to be your pregnant ones and they, they'll seem like they'll go into a cave and be just happy wherever they're at until the eggs hatch and then 
she'll need that nutrition and she'll come out to eat and she won't have eggs anymore and then you're all worried about oh did the eggs hatch are they alive well like i said it's going to take that first week where the shrimps are like not going to move at all until it molts and so I, I usually generally wait like three weeks before I'm like, oh man, maybe she dropped her eggs because first time female can drop all of her eggs. She's not uh, used to holding them all. Something happens, she molts early and all the eggs come off. Those things happen, but chances are she's hiding, has her eggs in the back corner and doesn't want to be bothered. Shrimp will eat the other shrimp and they are greedy and one shrimp will take another shrimp and run with it so chances are if you have a dead shrimp in the tank you're, you're gonna see it unless you have a ton a ton of moss in the tank generally you're gonna see the dead shrimp they're gonna turn pink on you the molts will throw off a lot of people thinking that they got a dead shrimp but if you don't see any pink or pigment or color to uh, the body, then it's probably a molt if it's just solid white. And they're gonna grow their entire life cycle. They're never gonna stop molting. So even a four or five year old shrimp, it's still gonna be shedding its molt every time it outgrows the one beforehand. So this like came out all the way to here and then I had like some drawers up there and I had my like stereo right there as a kid. And then I had my computer desk went across the window and then I had uh, another dresser right there for all of my cars and stuff. And then underneath here was two dressers for Legos. When we took over the house from my parents, I put a couple tanks in here, but I could only put like one on where my stereo was, a couple on the desk, and like one where the thing was. And then I had a bunch of tanks on the floor. I had a couple buddies who were just getting into the hobby and between like the four or five of them, they spent like three grand within like a two week period. They cleaned me out of like all my plants, all my nice mosses and Anubis. They, they basically bought them all. They bought as many shrimp as they could get in their tanks and stuff like that. And I basically used all of that money to set up these racks and these tanks and stuff like that. When I was a kid, I only fell off the top here like twice and the only time it really hurt was when I fell on Legos. All these stickers are stickers of of mine from when I was a kid. That's crazy. And except for like the Star Wars one, like Jaden's been adding his own. And check out the back side of it. These are all my stickers from the, the fish uh, shows. That's cool. Everybody's favorite are these orange eye blue tigers. Uh, these are kind of like one of the main shrimp where I was like, man, I, I gotta have these. I really want them. They were the first ones where uh, I really sought after and, and was trying to figure out the parameters and how to get these guys to breed because uh, everything else was really easy until I got to these. How long did it take you to crack the code to really get them going and feel comfortable with them and have success? I, I think only like six months, but it, everything else was like a month I threw it in the tank and I'd get buried. So. so like nobody else has that. So I'm trying to get more purple dots on the shrimp. And if I could get maybe like 10 to 15 of those purple dots on each shrimp, I think that would be something special. Yeah, I see like on that upper, the, the dot closer to the head on that one, right? It's like that yeah. purple. And they almost all have it. It's weird. It's on a different spot in the body on all of them. These are the Yellow King Kong Rillies, but they're the Missouri because they don't have any tail color. I call them lemon heads. Lemon heads, okay. But then on the other one, if you go to the next tank over, you have the reverse where you have a clear Missouri pattern and a yellow, a yellow back. And I call these ones Headless Horsemen. Okay, that's what I saw on your web. I saw that Headless Horseman somewhere. So is that name Missouri? Is that my saying it correctly? Missouri? Missouri, yeah. And is that the name for the head carapace or something? Is it that, that That's a color or a pattern where the head is a different color than the body. Gotcha. So you got Germany and then you have uh, Taiwan. Those two are like the leaders, but then you got a bunch of great breeders in France and the Netherlands and uh, it's a lot bigger in Europe than it is in the United States, but it's slowly picking up. The first contest we went to, um, this guy came all the way from Brazil just to meet me and Chris. Wow. Yeah, so, and I was, I felt like a nobody then. I, I was the judge for the first international contest, but I'd only been keeping shrimp for like two and a half to three years at that point. We have the international contest, 
and we get a bunch of people from Taiwan that just dominate the whole con the whole contest. And then you got me, who's the only guy standing there that speaks any English, hoping to win an award. And I'm just happy to take home a, a, a medal. And I ended up getting first in crystal, uh, crystals, which is completely dominated by Taiwan. And I got first in tigers, which I've been dominating that category since I started. Other than that, um, nobody in the United States won another award. Total domination by Taiwan. We're having our own shows and stuff in the United States. COVID kind of slowed all that down, but hopefully we'll get a show or two before the end of this year. And these are a hybridized uh, cheetah shrimp with uh, either a golden bee or a red steel. And this is the largest variety of phenotypes I've ever seen come from F2. I've got everything from red to tan and gray, and I don't know if we'll be able to find one, but they, they'll produce solid blues and solid blacks. You've even got some steels that came out of the second generation. So for just how many different patterns, stripes, and colors that came out of these guys, uh, definitely impressive. And they're so prolific. It seems like the females are just constantly producing babies. All right, get out. Yeah, we got all these tanks in. The only thing I can't do is put tanks on top of the TV. I think that's where all the isopods might end up if we get any more. But right now it's got all the kids' Pokemon and all of our equipment. And then I'm not really like a shoe guy or anything like that. But these are imported from Australia. And we got the little shrimp on them. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, that's cool as heck. So I only wear these at like Aquashella or uh, our, our shows. So these are Galaxy Pintos, but like the one I would want to show you is the Boa. Okay. Uh, the Boa, they're going to have crazier pattern uh, and colors. Um, the Boa morph is almost like a golden metallic on top, but then it has so much mini more splotches and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, kind of like a Boa constrictor, how the pattern on the snake is. Yeah, we're doing a little puppy love here. This is, this is fish? Or shrimp, shrimp? Shrimp, yeah. It is easier to breed for pattern first and then select the, the colors after. Set the pattern and then work on honing in that color, okay. Yeah, because the colors are so easy to separate and then get the color to breed pure. Oh, I, I know how it is. That's why I butcher all my Latin. <laughs> I don't know, you played that. Uh, like RuneScape. I used to play EverQuest back in the day, a little bit of World of, uh, World of Warcraft. Warcraft. Ogamar and all those towns and stuff like yeah. that. I can, if it wasn't for people on Ventrilo, like I completely butchered it in my head. And then we're on Ventrilo and they're like, all right, we gotta go to Ogamar. And I'm like, huh, that's how you say it. We had a horrible sinkhole issue with the house. And uh, if you see this crack and everything like that, that all happened because there's an 80 foot cavern basically underneath our house. And then you got some koi in here. What kind of turtle is that? Is that a terrapin or? That's our male th diamondback terrapin. Just wanted to say hi. We got some more shrimp totes over here, the IBC totes. Yeah. And these are all those like 275 gallons and you have them set up like kind of like halfway. Yeah, and I'm actually in the middle of doing water changes. Out here I've got plenty of room. Yeah, there's a lot of leeway. Yeah, and if I flood, it's not inside. It's not, it's not a problem out here. I'll do these water changes on a day where I just got a lot of stuff around the house to do so I, I can just set the hoses yeah. and kind of forget about them and set them to like an hour timer on my watch and I'll have the alarm go off when I should come back out here and check up on them. All these tubs, for the most part, fulls of shrimp. And he, okay, so really you keep some strange. substrate on the bottom too. Based on the, the color of the, the zip tie here, yeah. that's what color shrimp is in there pretty much? Yep, and if, if you see there's some extra zip ties since the last time you came, I've added uh, the snowballs to the last tote and the greens from inside out there as well. And then we just got a little screen cloth to keep the dragonfly out, but when I do my water changes, I just have this 
oh, uh, okay. guard to prevent any of the babies from getting siphoned up. This is the same thing I use for my tanks inside. It's just a, a long enough hose that I, all my water from all my water changes will get drained into the pool. So that way I'm kind of getting a nice fresh water change on the pool without wasting yeah. 8,000 gallons. The only reason why I'm doing water changes is to replace the, the mineral content. It's all gravity fed, so all you have to do is walk the line a little bit and it'll get it flowing back into the, the pool. I got a hundred different varieties. I want to have two of every single tank going just in case I oversell out of one. I got a backup tank and then not only that, so I'll need 200 tanks just right there. We're only at 217, but now I've got all my tanks where I'm crossing almost all the types Projects together to work on stuff so some bread and butter and something you have to you're creating you yeah to work on the next thing so like the the, pur the the purples with the little purple dots i was calling them nebulas but then some importer named his wild caught shrimp nebula so i'll, I'll come up with something else but uh if if i wanted to work on them more instead of selling the coals i'll call them into a different take and then use the babies that potentially come out nice to start up and create two going tanks. Inside will be small tanks, where outside I can still add another probably 200 IBC totes before yeah, there's, there's I'm, some land over here. I saw you got some, you got some before I max it. The, the goal is just enough room for our wheelbarrow to be able to go through. Might have to move after that or something like that, but in, we've got tons of room to work with. And once these ones behind me start producing, we're not selling out of any of the tubs down this fence line. So once those start selling, I'll be able to make wholesale orders and stuff like that a lot easier. I'm doing some here and there, but not as much as I used to. I turn around a lot more people than I should be right now. I sold my landscape uh, business four years ago. And I, when I sold my landscape business, I basically gave myself 17 months where I had bill free, didn't have to worry about anything and I just built up the business. Any shrimp that I was selling, I was putting right back into the business, buying more tanks. Since I've been in fourth grade, I've been wanting to breed exotic pets. Um, my very first like little um, breeding project was uh, Chinese dwarf hamsters. And so like that was the very first thing I bred. And then since then, I've just been constantly trying to find the, the new high, chasing the new high yeah. breeding and, and making something new really.